I played this game the way it's not supposed to be played, because about 70% of the time, something hilarious was happening. So I'm going to get straight to showing you the beauty of Hogwarts. We'll start with character creation and then delve deeper into whatever's going on sometimes. Well, this is a nice mess you've got me into. Ah! Creation-wise, it's pretty standard. You've got face, hair, skin, uh, nothing more advanced like morphing or sliders. I wasn't expecting Saints Row. I, I would have liked Saints Row, but that's life. One of my main issues is the voice options. You get a choice between two voices and a pitch slider that sounds absolutely horrific. I am indeed a student, but I could very well be able to help you. The redemption, however, when it comes to character customization, is the large variety of cosmetics. You're given six gear slots consisting of hand, face, head, neck, cloaks and robes and outfits, and each piece can be transmogrified into other pieces of corresponding gear you've found, or unlocked through challenges. And these can be changed at any time without affecting the stats of your currently equipped gear for free. You can also toggle on and off certain pieces like masks or hoods or capes. So if you don't like your face, put a mask on. If you don't like your voice, uh, good luck. I believe I'm really going to enjoy this class. A surprising amount of settings, especially in terms of accessibility, even has an FOV slider and we're not getting many of those these days on release because uh, I played Atomic Heart on launch, couldn't see a thing, uninstalled, give more FOV sliders. I highly recommend you turn off camera relative targeting in the gameplay options though. Otherwise, to change targets, you need to aim your right stick in the direction of different enemies to target them. And that's incredibly awkward to do whilst also doing other things. Not sure why that's on by default, because simply aiming the left stick in the direction of enemies is much, much more fluid. The game looks amazing. While recording this, I turned off all HUD elements and slow walked around many places. And it's incredible. Makes me wish there were more immersive HUD options, but you're just stuck with everything on screen always. My biggest piece of advice, if you have an RTX GPU, turn off ray tracing. Hogwarts is ridiculously shiny for no reason. If this is a lore thing and there are house elves making things sparkle, cool. But I want to be able to see. So there's two types of evil in Hogwarts Legacy. There's evil, and then there's arsehole. Me, Slytherin Quidditch captain. You, the main character, are not allowed to be evil. That's for the evil people. All you can do is be an arsehole. But let me tell you something. You can be a pretty big arsehole. I made it my goal, my legacy, to be the biggest arsehole and I enjoyed every single pointless, meaningless moment of us holery. Fellow student, give fetch quest. I got what you wanted, but I'm keeping it. You have nerve! Fellow student, give fetch quest. I got what you wanted, but I'm keeping it. You're not at all who I thought you to be! Fellow student, give fetch quest. I got what you wanted, but I'm keeping it. You've wasted my time. You're not who I thought you were. And then you get to run into them randomly at school and they're still pissed. I wish I'd never told you about my gobstones. I met you. Nobody cares what you do. I've learned that unforgivable curses are very forgivable in Hogwarts, actually. I settled for placing people into an eternal, perpetual hell where they just walk on the same spot eternally until their bodies break down and they meld into each other with magic. Also, a ghost got stuck. <laughs> what? How does a ghost get stuck? How does a ghost get stuck? The feet! The feet are above the ground! The feet are above the ground! Oh my god! Oh my god, he on X Games mode. Were you worried your triple A full retail priced game was bug free? Don't worry, it's got tons of them. P 
people stuck in the ground. Help! Someone! Ah! Clones. A wizard kind's best friend. Repetitive dialogue. Untouched chest. Teratol wasn't very thorough in his search of this cave. An untouched chest. That's odd. That's odd. Yeah, hey, stop talking. I don't even think that's a bug. It's just very, very painful. Luckily, most of them are non-game breaking and just hilarious, thankfully. Well, this is a nice mess you've got me into. Ah! Miriam wanted to understand why such powerful magic disappeared from the wizarding oh, world. Brother, but this but guy stinks! Game but is, is no immersive. Once I finished the two hour tutorial where teachers held my hand and shoved exposition down my throat, I was free to explore Hogwarts. Ah, up there! I felt like a little wizard. They did an incredible job creating this expansive, living, breathing world, rich with detail and lore. The map is huge, and though I haven't explored everywhere yet, there's always something in the distance or around the corner. It fascinated me. Just don't stay in the same place too long or explore too hard. I experimented by standing around listening to dialogue and people watching. If you do that, the immersion will die. I was in one area where seven of the same character model were in the same place at once, and this occurs often everywhere. If you walk past a conversation between two students, no problem, but if you stick around and listen, you'll realise they're not having a conversation, they're just spewing sentences loosely based around the same topic, or better yet, just shitting out completely different topics and then one student will suddenly decide to float away. There are also a ton of fun scripted interactions throughout the game too, but even then they're kind of weird. I also noticed that something is up with the face animations, and it's hilarious. I informed this lady that her brother was out practicing dark magic in the woods and was turned into an infernius, so I had to kill him. You've seen it now, and you can't unsee it, and it will happen all the time, so I apologize. Oh, Bardolf! This is one of those new open world games. So, the basic format in terms of progression is as follows. Fetch quest. Fetch quest. Fetch quest. Complete objectives whilst doing fetch quests to unlock new spells. Main quest. Repeat. Plus exploration if you feel like it. By the way, the objectives to unlock new spells are completely irrelevant to the spell you'll learn. Like having to fly through balloons to learn how to freeze someone. But all in all, to my surprise, as not the biggest fan of open world games, this was fun for me. It's not like, for example, the newer Assassin's Creed games where you have ridiculous amounts of everything, everywhere, all at once, and it's completely pointless and level locked. I don't like that shit. Sure, bro. I don't like that shit. It's more like I know what I gotta do, and I'm doing it whilst doing a couple other things, and I'm chilling. Breathing in the magic, you know? Of course. The spell learning classes were garbage though. Don't give us one button QTEs that last forever if I don't press anything. Give me bully. Welcome to the world of biology. The amount of times I went to class and wished I was playing Bully is crazy. A lot of inspiration could be taken from Bully in terms of classes, activities, and especially the day-night cycles. Because, prime example, you go to a quest at the wrong time, and you'll just fall asleep on the floor and wake up to begin the quest. And then I'll just hit you with an, Oh, you're here! I didn't see you! You made it. No, for real, don't play like that. 
Are you serious? Main story is predictable. You'll know as soon as you know. It's not really about the main story, it's really not. The final boss is amazing though. I had a lot more fun learning about the side characters and doing their storylines and just exploring, doing random quests in the world. is fun. Probably one of my favourite aspects about the game, along with exploration and world building, everything has impact, and the voice actors did a great job bringing the spell cast to life. This is for Rockwood! Oh shit, what is that? <laughs> Enemy variety is very low, and my interest in fighting non-humanoids was abysmal. I ended up just seeking out camps of humans for magic battles. Come on, you bastards. Fight me. I'm Cornelius Blaze, the most legendary wizard of all time. If it's action you want, come for me. I will destroy every single one of you. But I need that. We've got four schools of offensive magic. Control. Force. Damage and unforgivable curses. Along with a basic four hit combo with the fourth dealing the most damage. And once your ancient bar is filled enough, you can hurl many destructible items at enemies or one shot them with stylish finishing moves. There are also talent points to spend to upgrade spells to have additional effects or transform them entirely. For instance, if you upgrade Akio and Incendio, you can pull multiple enemies towards you, and then send them flying and burning with an incendio. However, you only have four spell slots for quite a while, so you need to reach a certain level, and then unlock a new spell set, allowing you to swap to a different spell set mid-combo with new spells to utilize. So I think what they were going for was do one combo, swap set, do one combo, swap set, do combo, swap set. You probably can't swap again because chances are the fourth set is reserved for non-combat spell, so you're wasting less time when not in combat. But there's also another issue. To swap spell sets by default, you need to hold down right trigger or R2 on PlayStation and press a D-pad key. It's very awkward to do and messes with the flow of combat to the point that I think many people won't even bother trying because it's not fluid enough and it's not necessary unless you're on the highest difficulty where shields can only be broken by specific spell types. I think something more like the controller combat from Final Fantasy XIV would have been perfect for a game like this. Can you imagine how much more enjoyable combat would be if you could hold down different bumper and trigger combinations to easily do spells from different sets? <laughs> this is your first duel, isn't it? The gearing system is a great idea, cosmetically. But inventory-wise, it's just pure, pointless pain. You get a full inventory ridiculously fast, and then you need to waste time going to a vendor to sell the gear. And you can't sell all gear instantly. You need to sell each individual piece of gear. So at a certain point in the game, I just started destroying everything in my inventory. The stat differences aren't worth the tediousness of it most of the time. You can get more gear slots by completing Merlin Trials, but it really doesn't make much of a difference. It just takes an extra 5 minutes before you need to go and sell stuff. The monotony of this could have easily been fixed by having a much larger inventory, a way to sort items for selling, and a sell all button. I don't care. My knowledge of Harry Potter is the guy from Twilight was in one of the movies. All in all, I enjoyed Hogwarts Legacy. 
When I stopped to really take my time with everything, I felt immersed in just exploring on the way to my next objective and finding little secrets and puzzles in the nooks and crannies of Hogwarts. The combat felt impactful and the combos I could pull off were great. I think if you're a fan of the world of Harry Potter, then that experience will be twofold for you. Or if you just want a fantasy world as a wizard, uh, levitating enemies, freezing them and then sending them flying to shatter them into a wall, it's ridiculously satisfying. But there are a lot of what-ifs. What if there was an actual day-night cycle where you had to actually get to class on time or lose out on certain upgrades? Or you'd be punished or hunted down if you're out past curfew? What if classes weren't just pointless cutscenes or QTEs, and instead fun, interactive activities? What if you could actually be evil? What if your use of unforgivable curses actually had an effect on you, on the people around you, on the decisions you can make and the outcomes of things? What if many of the activities you could do, like crossed wands, was a lot more fleshed out? and had many more rewards and scenarios. My point is, this game could have been so much more. What we got was good, sufficient, but you do feel a sense of hollowness, shortcuts and missed opportunities. And I think that that's the problem with most AAA titles these days. This was my first time ever doing any type of video like this ever, any type of review, any type of editing like this kind of. So uh, if you liked it, please like, subscribe, comment, because there will definitely be more. And if you have any games in mind, uh, let me know. Thanks for watching.